Greetings in the name of our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh, welcome to God's house today. May the Lord bless us richly as we worship together today. Today is Trinity Sunday, and so we um, focus on the mystery of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three persons, yet one God. On this Sunday, as we do every year, the Athanasian Creed, uh, we do divide it up uh, in three sections, and we do it responsibly so that we can focus on the words that are there as it expresses the Christian faith, which emphasizes the truth that God is three in one. Uh, also, we uh, a reminder to sign the record of fellowship and pass that to your neighbor, and may the Lord bless us today as we worship together. Let's take a moment to turn to those to, around us and express God's peace. God's peace. Yeah, good to see you, Mark. God's peace. Miranda, God's peace. Good morning. We turn to our opening hymn, number 507, Holy, Holy, Holy.
we turn to page two in our worship folder. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We'll take a moment of silence for reflection on God's Word and for self-examination. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity and the undivided unity. I have set the Lord always before me. Therefore my heart is glad and my whole being rejoices. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol. You make known to me the path of life. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, and the undivided unity. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord 
Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the man who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and blessing and glory are The Lord be with you. <clears throat> Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us grace to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity by the confession of a true faith and to worship the unity and the power of the divine majesty. Keep us steadfast in this faith and defend us from all adversities. For you, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, live and reign, one God, now and forever. Amen. At this time we uh, begin our confession of faith and the triune God in the first part of the Athanasian Creed. Whoever desires to be saved must, above all, hold the Catholic faith. And the Catholic faith is this. That we worship one God in Trinity, and Trinity in unity, the unity in the persons, For the Father is one person, the Son is another, and the Holy Spirit is another. Such as the Father is, such is the Son, and such is the Holy Spirit. The Father uncreated, the Son uncreated, the Holy Spirit uncreated. The Father infinite, the Son infinite, the Holy Spirit infinite. And yet there are not three eternals, but one eternal. In the same way, the Father is Almighty, the Son Almighty, the Holy Spirit Almighty. And yet there are not three Almighties, but one Almighty. So the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God. And yet there are not three Gods, but one God. So the Father is Lord, the Son is Lord, the Holy Spirit is Lord. Please take your seats.
Just a, a friendly reminder this morning that when we confess the Athanasian Creed, it speaks of the Catholic faith. You notice that the word Catholic is with a small c, and the word Catholic simply means universal. So this is the, uni- the Christian faith universally, and, and that as Christians we hold to the truth of the Trinity. If there is a group that claims to be Christian but does not confess the truth of the tri- triune God, then um, it is not a Christian church. So this is an important uh, important thing to keep in mind that we hold to this truth because it's revealed in Scripture, uh, even though we cannot comprehend it humanly speaking. The Old Testament reading for this Trinity Sunday is from Proverbs chapter 8. Does not wisdom call? Does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights beside the way, at the crossroads, she takes her stand. Beside the gates in front of the town, at the entrance of the portals, she cries aloud. To you, O men, I call, and my cry is to the children of man. The Lord possessed me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of old. Ages ago I was set up, at the first, before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water, before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth. Before he had made the earth with its fields or the first of the dust of the world, when he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit, so that the waters might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him like a master workman, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabitant world and delighting in the children of man. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The New Testament reading is from Acts chapter 2. But then Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David that he both died and was buried and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet and knowing that God had sworn an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we all are witnesses." Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out, on, poured out this that you are, yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into heaven, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus, whom you crucified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel, and we sing. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have 
Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 8th chapter. The Jews answered him, Are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my Father, and you dishonor me. Yet I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks it. And he is the judge. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. The Jews said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died, as did the prophets. Yet you say, if anyone keeps my word, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who died, and the prophets died? Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father who glorifies me, of whom you say he is our God. But you have not known him. I know him. If I were to say that I do not know him, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him, and I keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. You saw it, he saw it, and was glad. So the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. This is the gospel of the Lord. We continue with the Athanasian Creed. Just as we are compelled by the Christian truth to acknowledge each distinct person as God and Lord, so also are we prohibited by the Catholic religion to say that there are three gods or lords. The Son is neither made nor created, but begotten of the Father alone. The Holy Spirit is of the Father and of the Son, neither made nor created, nor begotten of the Father Thus there is one Father, not three fathers, one Son, not three sons, one Holy Spirit, not three Holy Spirits. But the, but the whole three persons are co-eternal with each other and co-equal, so that in all things, as has been stated above, the Trinity in unity and unity in Trinity is to be worshipped. We continue now with the hymn of the day, number 940. Please take your seats.
Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. The word of God that engages us this morning is the gospel reading from John chapter 8, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Two Fridays ago, I went in to pay our car insurance, and although the regular insur insurance agent we work with was not in the office, his associate was, and he was more than happy to help me out. And walked into his office and sat down at the desk and we began to talk a little bit and he learned that I was a Lutheran pastor and he was excited because his daughter is going off to college this fall to a Lutheran uh, college and it not connected with our synod, it was with a different synod and, and we got talking in, in the conversation and I asked him what church he attended and he goes, oh, oh I don't go to a Lutheran church. And I said, I, I probably realized that. I didn't ask what Lutheran church you attended. What church do you go to? And, and, and he didn't give me an answer. Instead, he goes, you know, what I like to do is I take courses online. And right now, I'm connected to a, a Hebrew college, and I'm listening to a Hebrew rabbi who is out of state. And, and we're going through the Old Testament. It's not that we're learning the Hebrew language, but that's really fascinating. But, but this, this professor, this teachers talking about how, how God's people, the Jewish people, had the promise that they, they were God's people. They had salvation, and they lived a life according to all the laws and regulations that God had given to them. And he, he went on to give some examples and how, how they lived as God's people. And he says, but there's a disconnect because people today, we don't we don't have those promises, but we have the hope. We have the hope of life, and we have the, the promise of heaven, but the, the Jewish people don't have that. The, but they live by the promises, and we have the hope, and we need to, we need to find a connection between the two because, because we have hope, but we don't live as God's people. We don't live like the Jewish people do, and that's why we are surrounded with, with suffering and death and cancer. We need to live as God's people. So picture yourself sitting there at his desk. What would you say? Would you change the topic and, and get to the task at hand to make your payment? Would you say, you know, here's the name of my pastor, why don't you call him? <laughs> Maybe you'd say, next time I'm making my payment online. <laughs> what would you say? I invite you to think about that for a minute. Today as a church, we celebrate Holy Trinity Sunday. We focus on our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One God in three persons, confessed in the Athanasian Creed, uh, the majesty co-equal, the, the power co-eternal. And we celebrate our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, hard to comprehend and understand, and yet it is true, and by faith we trust in who He is and how He has revealed Himself to us. And as we think about the Holy Trinity, so often when it comes to thinking about God, the question boils down to who is Jesus? And what has he come to do? That's what we see in John chapter 8. In our gospel reading from John chapter 8, it is the last portion of a big argument that Jesus is having with the Pharisees. In fact, the argument starts in John chapter 8, verse 12. 36 verses before our text begins this morning. Jesus has been arguing with the Pharisees about who he is. He begins in John 8, verse 12 by saying, I am the light of the world. And the Pharisees say, wait a minute, you are proclaiming about yourself. You need two or three witnesses according to the law of Moses to declare who you are. And Jesus says, I am the light of the world who has come to bring life. And the Pharisees deny it. And Jesus says, I come to bring truth, and the truth will set you free. And they say, wait a minute. 
We've been slaves to no one. Abraham is our father. And Jesus says, if Abraham was your father, then you would be doing the works of Abraham. Instead, you're doing the works of your father, the devil. He's essentially saying that they are demon-possessed. That's where our text begins. With the Pharisees responding and say, we are not the ones who have a demon. You're a Samaritan. That's an insult. <laughs> a Samaritan is the one who, who is outside of the bounds of God's promises. They were God's people, Israel, but they began to intermarry and not live as God would have them live according to the law. And Jesus, you're a Samaritan. You are the one who is possessed with a demon. That's where our text begins in John chapter 8, verse 48. And yet Jesus says in verse 49, I do not have a demon, but I honor my Father, and you dishonor me. Jesus is speaking about who he is. God's Son. How God the Father is the one who sent him to be the light of the world, to bring the truth, to be the truth, to set people free. And the Pharisees want nothing of it. And they, they are trying to understand who Jesus is. In fact, they say it in verse 53 of our text. Are you greater than our father Abraham who died and the prophets who died? Who do you make yourself out to be? Who are you, Jesus? How do you answer that question? Who is Jesus? Back there in that office with that insurance agent, how would you respond? Right or wrong, I responded this way. After he got done talking about how people with hope don't live according to God's word, and that's why we have the problems that we have in life, and I, I said, so what do you do with someone like me? I knew he did not know me. <laughs> and he paused for a minute, and he goes, I, I don't know what you mean. He said, obviously, you know that I am a pastor. I have the hope of Jesus, and I strive to live according to God's word and his commandments. I am not perfect in that, and yet my life and my decisions seek to bring glory to him, and yet I also face suffering in my life. And I've grieved because of death, and my son is going through chemo treatments. What do you do with someone like me? He paused for a moment. And he was thinking, and I said, the problem with what you just said is that if I would live my life right or better, I wouldn't have any suffering or death or cancer in my life. And the problem with that is it takes away from Jesus' death and resurrection. It is only by Jesus' death and resurrection that we have the promise of life, that we have the certainty that our suffering will be done, that the death will no longer have a grip of his people, and all illnesses, including cancer, will be healed forever. He went on and talked about a few different things, and he finally wrapped it up by saying, you know, uh, it, it made sense when he was talking about it. <laughs> uh, the guy on the computer. Who is Jesus? We think about who our God is so often. It comes down to the question of who is Jesus and what has he come to do? We live in a world where people are confused about who Jesus is and what he has come to do. We see it not just in individual conversations with people in our lives, but we see it with different church bodies, different religious people. They don't understand who Jesus is. Take Muslims, for example. They see Jesus as a messenger 
from God. Or consider the Mormons. They consider Jesus, his teachings, and his perfect life as a life to follow and emulate and, and to do what Jesus did in order to have a life of, of fulfillment and happiness. Or consider Jehovah Witnesses. They see Jesus as one who is a mighty being, but he is not God. He is God's Son. But Jesus does not have the power or the eternity that God has. Or even Hindus. They see Jesus as a God, one amongst many. Our world is confused about who Jesus is and who our God is. But what about you? How do you answer that question of who is Jesus? Scripture gives us many good answers. We hear Peter say in the Gospel of Matthew that Jesus is the Almighty, the Son of God. We hear John the Baptist proclaim in John chapter 1, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. We hear Thomas say, O Lord and my God. Those certainly are good answers. And a bold confession of faith of who is Jesus. And yet today we consider God's word and we can make the confession of the Athanasian Creed and the Trinity, God in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And yet so often in our life, in our our world, we are surrounded by people who don't know who Jesus is. Who is Jesus? He says it clearly in our text. As the Pharisees are challenging Jesus and questioning him and doubting his words, Jesus makes the clear and bold confession in verse 58 of our text. He says, truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Jesus is declaring, I am, I am God, is what Jesus is saying. It's drawing the Pharisees back to when God spoke to Moses there at the burning bush. And Moses says, who should I say sent me? And God says, I am. In this moment, Jesus is declaring, I am. I am God. I am the Holy One. And the Pharisees consider it to be blasphemy. And so we hear in our last verse of our text that they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. But they would remember this moment. They would remember this conversation as they stood before Pilate in John chapter 19. And they declared Jesus is worthy of death because he has blasphemed the name of the holy God. He declared that he himself is God. And they sent him to the cross to suffer and die. And it is there on the cross that we see and we learn and we know who Jesus is our Savior, who went to the cross to suffer for our sin, to suffer in our place, to take on the consequences of all those times when we do not live according to God's word and we fail to be the holy child that we have been made in the waters of holy baptism. It is there on the cross of Calvary that we see Jesus, our Lord, our God, our Savior, suffer and die for us that we may be forgiven. And it is three days later that he rises victorious for you. 
to bring you life, to bring you the certainty and confidence that all your sin and your suffering and the death of this world and all the illnesses and diseases of this world are defeated in Christ. In his death and resurrection, you have life. Who is Jesus? He is our Lord and our Savior. He is the one who has redeemed us from this sinful world and claimed us as his own and has given us life in his kingdom forever. Who is Jesus? He's the one who gives you life. That's what Jesus says in our reading here in John chapter 8. And Jesus says it this way in verse 51. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. Who is Jesus? He is God's Son. Jesus. He is our God second person of the Trinity. And it is by the power of our God, through the working of His Holy Spirit, that we have faith in Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. And what has He done? He has suffered death on the cross and risen victorious so that you will never see death. Oh, sure, in this fallen sinful world, we may die. And yet Jesus only speaks about death as one who has fallen asleep. And Jesus will return on that last day and he will awake your body and it will rise to be with Jesus in eternity. On the day of your earthly death, your soul goes to heaven and is with Jesus that very moment. And on that last day, the body that has fallen asleep will awake and rise in a glorified, resurrected body by the power of Jesus. Jesus. Jesus tells us who he is and what he has done. In these words from John chapter 8, he is our God. He is our Lord. He is our Savior. And he promises in verse 51, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. How do you keep the word of Jesus? You keep the word of Jesus by reading his holy words written in Scripture and clinging to his promises clinging to the promise that you will never see death because of his own death and resurrection, clinging to the promise that your sins are forgiven because Jesus died and rose again. You keep his word by gathering with brothers and sisters in Christ in worship to hear God's word and to receive the body and blood of Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins. You keep God's word by reading it in personal devotions and gathering with people to study it in Bible study and speaking of Jesus in conversation with people that they may know who he is. God's son. And what he did to die on the cross for you, to bring you forgiveness and life for eternity. Indeed. You know Jesus, and you know what he has done for you. By his death and resurrection, he has brought you forgiveness and life that you may cling to the promise that you will never see death because of Jesus. In his name, amen. Now may the peace of Jesus who surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds the one true faith into life everlasting. Amen. We turn to page 10 in our worship folder as we confess a third part of the Athanasian Creed. At the end of this creed, 
It speaks about the people being held account based on their deeds. This is not a works righteousness kind of statement, but rather what Jesus speaks about in Matthew 25. As people give food to those who are hungry or a drink of cold water to those who are thirsty, it's not to earn favor, but it's in response to what God has done for them in through Jesus, living the holy lives that God has given. And so it's all focused on the work of Jesus and not the work of what we do in this world. So let us stand and make confession as we turn to page 10 in our worship folder. We confess together. But it is also necessary for everlasting salvation that one faithfully believe the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is the right faith that we believe and confess that our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is at the same time both God and man. He is God, begotten from the substance of the Father before all ages, and He is man, born from the substance of His mother in this age. Perfect God and perfect man, composed of a rational soul and human flesh equal to the Father with respect to His divinity, less than the Father with respect to His humanity. Although He is God and man, He is not two, but one Christ. One, however, not by the conversion of the divinity into flesh, but by the assumption of the humanity into God. One altogether, not by confusion of substance, but by unity of person. For as the rational soul and flesh is one man, so God and man is one Christ, who suffered for our salvation, descended into hell, rose again the third day from the dead, ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, God Almighty, from whence he will come to judge the living and the dead. At his coming, all people will rise again with their bodies and give an account concerning their own deeds. And those who have done good will enter into eternal life, and those who have done evil into eternal fire. This is the Catholic faith. Whoever does not believe it faithfully and firmly cannot be saved. Please be seated. This time we give our offerings and gifts to the Lord while we also sing the offering hymn number 876.
morning in our prayers, we include uh, those that are listed in our, our prayer uh, in the insert. We also, uh, among those listed there, we have uh, Debbie Messer, that's the cousin of Diane Betch, whose cancer has returned. We also pray for uh, Dorothy Podal's son, Rod, who has heart issues and is um, struggling with that. We also um, pray for the family of Larry uh, uh, Earhart, uh, that's Cheryl Schaefer's brother-in-law, who passed away on June the 7th. We also include in our prayers uh, the District Convention of uh, Montana District of the Lutheran Church of Missouri Synod, which begins tomorrow and will be held, uh, the convention will be held at Trinity Lutheran School. So we bow our heads for prayer. Blessed Father, from you come all that is, and we, have for, we are forever indebted to your grace for the gift of life. Receive this day our special thanks for the redemption you have provided in Jesus Christ, your Son, and for the work of the Spirit in bringing us to know you by faith and to be adopted as your children by baptism into the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed Father, you desire not the death of the sinner, but that all may live. Grant your Holy Spirit that hearing your word, all people may be brought to repentance and may confess with, with us their faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed Father, you have revealed yourself to us in Christ that we may know you by faith and confess you before the world. Give us your spirit that all, all churches may confess truly and faithfully your word and live in harmony of doctrine and life. In anticipation of that day when we shall kneel together at your uh, heavenly throne, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed Father, the whole world is your own, and you have established governments and leaders to serve your purpose. Bless our president, our governor, and all elected and appointed officials that in their stewardship of the nation and the state, they may be faithful and serve honorably for our benefit and for your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed Father, you have suffered fully the cost of love through your Son, Jesus. Give healing and peace to all of the afflicted, those who are grieving, and those who are dying. We hold up before you this morning, O oh Lord, Sharla, Rhonda, Katie, Catalea, Rhonda, Sylvia, Jim, Brittany, Beverly, Peter, Keith, Dorothy, Aaron, Dee, Don, Tammy, Don, Gary, Debbie, JC, John, Kinsley, Karen, Rod, John, Jim, Don, and the family of Larry, and those that we name in our hearts before you. Oh Lord, give all that is needful for them that they may endure their illness, confident of your presence. Supply them with grace sufficient for every need. Comfort them in their loss and give them the hope of life in your Son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to gather together as the churches of the Montana District of the Lutheran Church of Missouri Synod. As the convention begins tomorrow and lasts throughout this week, coming week, we pray that you would bless all who travel with safety, that you would bless the time together in study of your word and confession of faith, that you would bless the discussions and the deliberations that are going to be held at the convention, that your word would be proclaimed and the gospel would be heard. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, all these things we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. We continue on page 11 for the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and beneficial that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, 
Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, who with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit are one God, one Lord. In the confession of the only true God, we worship the Trinity in person and the unity and substance of majesty co-equal. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. Continue on page 13 with the post-communion canticle. from 
promises and leads his people forth in joy with shouts of thanks giving Alleluia, Alleluia. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this gracious gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We turn to our, our ascending hymn number 506. services have been a blessing for you. We're uh, glad to be of service and to have this uh, opportunity to reach out to our community. We also would love to meet you as well and so we would like to invite you to come to our church and participate in uh, it, with us in worship and Bible study. You know as many scripture passages that talk about being together as God's people and Jesus says where two or three are gathered in my name he is present and we invite you to be with us in Bible study. In fellowship times, you can see those on our website at trinitybillings.org. But also join us for worship. We have worship on Saturday evening at 5 o'clock and on Sunday morning at 8 and 10.30 with Bible study at 9.30 in between. We'd love to have you join us together as the family of God here at Trinity Lutheran Church. If there's any way that we can help you or meet any needs that you have, please call us at 406-245-245. 3984 and God's blessings on your day.